Hey, Weather Warriors, in this video I'm going to be giving you your official snowfall forecast for the nor'easter that's coming up the coast here this weekend. Here's your December 4th forecast, track timing, location, snowfall amounts, and much more. But before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you like educational weather forecast breakdowns just like this. And comment below if you want me to make more accumulating snow maps just like this. I'm going to be unveiling it later on in the video. But for now, we're going to be looking at this storm hour by hour. We're going to start off saturday morning at 6 a.m using the rdps model which i think it's done the best with this system this is the high resolution canadian model you can see the low pressure system sitting off the coast here not quite 100 percent organized yet but that moisture starting to stream north but notice the 540 line it is way off to the north so that's your average uh, temperature kind of uh, virtual temperature being uh, zero degrees in the atmosphere and that is displaced all of the precipitation is currently to the south of that line at uh, 6 a.m. on Saturday, so probably not a whole lot of snow there. You can see that's your mid-level lift, all of it to the south. This is mid-level mid rising motion, so it, if you have more rising motion, you're going to get some more uh, rain and precipitation, usually, if you have enough moisture, which we do. 100% almost relative humidity in the mid-levels. You don't get your uh, moisture from the low levels or the surface like you do in the summer with uh, snowstorms get them in the mid levels and you can see plenty of moisture up there you know it'll be dry at the surface but moist aloft but here's the column max temperature from surface to just below the jet that blue line is your zero degrees celsius or 32 degrees fahrenheit line it's way off to the north of that precip shield so just too warm but as we head towards saturday night or saturday afternoon this is 1 p.m the low deepens it's a 988 millibar low those Black geyser line starting to tighten, starts getting a little more breezy. Don't think we're going to be dealing with a blizzard, but got some moisture streaming north, and there's that 540 line. So it's starting to move into that subtle cold air mass. This is really not a, an overly powerful air mass. Like I said, the past few videos I've made on this, this has cold air issues. The Arctic air mass is just not in place. So it's moving into a very subtle, docile cold air mass. And you can see there's that blue that's your snow starting to break out i would expect this to be mostly sloppy mixing snow that doesn't accumulate much but as we head towards look at the lift here you can see that lift still mostly in the rain but watch what happens as this lift moves to the north this could make or break the system particularly for massachusetts vermont southern new hampshire and uh, even connecticut as well so i'm going to go over that in a second some big factors but it's still in the rain there's your moisture right there. A little bit of dry air, but nothing to worry about. Your main moisture is just to the east. That'll be sweeping and swirling into this system. Wow, look at that. Big comma head type of appearance. You can see Saturday night, 7 p.m. here. Here's your low. It's a 984. It's deepening even more. The more it's going south, the stronger these things get. But look at this wrapping here. This cold front has already moved to the east. Usually when you get a cold front in the winter, you right along that cold front, it's freezing. But we have to go miles to the west before we hit that 540 line. But that 540 line is getting dragged into this thing. As this low deepens, it's going to suck colder air in, as you see here. And so we finally get that rain to snow, transition to mostly snow for New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, Massachusetts, even Connecticut. And uh, you can see that rain to snow line still up here. So anything to the east of that's going to be wet, sloppy stuff. I'd expect Saturday evening and night to be very sloppy snow. Here's that lift. You can see that lift now. Usually when these storm, these lows deepen, like you just saw, just as they're developing, you'll see streams of lift get lofted north into that snow. And early on, right as it's transitioning, right along that snow line, as the lows deepening, that's when your heaviest lift occurs and your heaviest snowfall rates will occur. And when you get that really dark blue like that, you could see a, a flash of thunder or two. So some thunder snow potentially for an hour or so with one to three inch per hour rates in Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and maybe even Massachusetts and Connecticut. Here's that moisture. You can see that moisture now swirling around it. Now, here's the big difference here. This is the GFS, and the GFS, I'm going to say, is out to launch. You know, it's it's uh, pretty significant. And look at this. This is uh, Saturday at 1 p.m. It's got this transitioning to snow much earlier. But look at the 540 line. It is way to the north, but yet it's got really heavy snow, one to three inch plus inch amounts here, likely thunder snow. 
because uh, you probably got some isolated thunderstorms blowing right into it. But watch that. Watch what happens here. This is the 540 line. The average temperature being freezing in the atmosphere. We're going to go down to the uh, 700s. You can see that negative four is negative five or so is where you're uh, you typically want it for freezing. It's uh, it's actually pretty close to that where that snows at. You look at the 850s. This is the zero degree line, and the zero degree line indicates freezing in the low levels. And you can see it actually is freezing where that snow is falling and even just a little bit to the east. However, the average virtual temperature is still above freezing. So we're gonna be factoring this in and I'll show you what I think here in a second. The column max temperature, this is the maximum temperature between surface and just below the jet. It's zero degrees, but it's all the, or uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius, but it's all the way up in Canada. There's a couple blips here and there. So what that's indicating is wherever this is snowing, it's actually above freezing in parts of the atmosphere. It's freezing in parts, as you saw with the 850s, the low levels, but it's also above freezing. What's that mean? Well, some of that snow that falls is going to melt and get sloppy as it's falling, not to mention the surface temperatures, mid-30s. So early on, as this storm is organizing, you're going to get some very, very sloppy snow, snow ratios, 6 to 8 to 1, which indicates slushy stuff. And the ground temperatures also take some time to cool as well. So what I'm saying is the GFS has like a foot or so in this area. I'm saying cut those amounts in about a fourth to maybe a half. I think the GFS is way overdone for the southern end. This is the issue. You got a big, big, huge ridge to the east and a ridge to, ridge to the west and east. And it's really isolated, this little system. Very organized. Very, very organized, but it's lacking the cold air. And I've been saying that the past few videos, I just think that's a little bit overdone for the southern end here. But this cold air finally gets sucked into this system. You can see those 540 lines moving in. This is much more guaranteed to be snow as we head towards Sunday morning. This is around 1 a.m. or so. That lift moves north into the system. Whoops, there we go. So that significant lift is in the system. Heavy snow, one inch per hour rates. As we head towards Sunday morning, 6 a.m. or so, that snow begins to weaken out a little bit when these it goes back to up to a 986 when these storms start to, to weaken a little bit they shear out they become more widespread but at the same time they lose a little bit of intensity so you'll have some long duration snows as we head through maybe even as much as sunday night even some flurries on the back end all right all right guys it is time for our model wars segment what model is going to predict the snowfall amounts the best i'll show you my map right after this you can see the GFS here has a good swath of three to six inches. And in the core, you're talking, wow, look at that, 12 to 24 inches, parts of northern Maine, New Hampshire, all the way down to maybe Vermont and Connecticut. I'm not buying the southern area. As I was talking about earlier with that rain to snow line, the GFS is a bit out to lunch for the southern area where it's you know forecasting as much as one foot or more in some of those areas. I would slash that amount into about one-fourth to one-half of what it says for that area. You can see that RDPS is a little more in line with what I'm thinking, except for that southern end. It's probably going to be a little bit more than what that shows. It's kind of nebulous down there, but that's really indicating the rain-to-snow issues that I was talking about. Yeah, you might get some snow, but it might melt. And obviously, the, the temperatures on the surface will take a little bit longer to cool as well. So that's going to cut off amounts by about one-fourth to half of what the GFS and the European here is showing. And you can see the European has got 16 inches plus on the southern end. But through Maine and all the way through Maine, it's got that 16-inch amount. And the area in Maine should uh, be much closer to verifying with that cold air that sweeps in later. Here's the NAM. And I'm using snow depth uh, to kind of factor in some other uh, the warm temperatures and surface here. You can see the, the snow depth here, 20 plus inches. Okay, New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine. So pretty crazy on the NAM. This is the uh, Winter Storm Severity Index by the National Weather Service. They've got most of this area in a minor impact with most of Maine in a moderate and even a major impact in parts of Maine. Here's my snowfall amounts, guys. Uh, I'm forecasting one to three inches for areas near the lakes and also the upper elevations here, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. And then one to three inches 
for much of the extreme northeastern United States, except for mostly southern Maine. And uh, as much as four to six inches within this blue area. So you can see that this area, I'm not buying the GFS and the Europeans 12 to 18 inch mounts in there. Again, there's going to be some cold air issues on the southern side here in Connecticut and Massachusetts. Just to the north, though, 7 to 11 inches through about central and northern Maine. And then in northern Maine, you're talking as much as potentially 12 to 16 inches plus. So that's where the, the best bet's going to be. Most areas around 12 to 13, but there's going to be some areas that could clock in over 15 inches. So pretty intense storm up there. Again, the cold air is the issue for really that area right there, but there'll be enough cold air that sweeps in to give most of central and northern Maine a decent snowstorm. So, all right, guys, stay tuned for more maps. Let me know what you think about these accumulation maps. Hope you have a great day. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you soon.